Welcome to everyone. This is called The Vermonter's View of Cuba. It's an exhibition that's part of the Cafe Exchange Project, and it's a parallel show to the four Cuban photographers, um, which is a show at the Darkroom Gallery in Essex. This particular one of Vermonter's Views of Cuba is here in the Pickering Room at the Fletcher Free Library. What we had started to do was invite four Cuban photographers to Vermont as part of an exchange. And when it became apparent that they weren't getting their visas, um, we created this parallel show of Vermonters who've gone to Cuba and come back with images of Cuba. And um, we have 10 different folks here in this show. And you can come visit them at the library any day of the week. Um, you can look on the library hours to see what days to get here. And um, the show is open whenever the library is open, uh, seven days a week, except for holidays. And um, uh, we're going to interview some of the photographers. And um, the other thing that we have, we have a book that is a catalog of the exhibition that, of the Cuban photographers. And it's phenomenal. It was put together by Dan Higgins. And then the other thing that we have that's for a donation is this poster that cre we created of the four Cuban works. Um, and so we welcome you to see that as well as this show um, of the Vermonters. That's extraordinary because so many of us have been there and taken amazing photographs of the place, both urban as well as rural photos. And um, we're just trying to engage all of us in the story behind Cuba and create more relationships between us as people to people in this cultural exchange. Thank you. Thank you all for being here. This is great to see. And um, folks use this room all the time at the library for meetings, for um, school groups. And so that was part of the excitement of using this room at the library was that it would be seen by lots of different people, um, not just those of us that come to a reception. So that was sort of exciting. Hi, I'm Barbara Shatera. I'm a librarian here at the Fletcher Free Library. And one of the things that I do here is I uh, oversee our art exhibits. And this art exhibit that we have of Vermonters' views of Cuba uh, came to us from Diane Geyer. She had sent us an email and inquiring if we wanted to have um, a show of the works of these photographers. And, and of course, <laughs> we would love to have them here. And, but when, they, when the exhibit was installed in, this, in the Pickering Room, I was just completely bowled over. It is such an amazing um, exhibit and such a window into the world in Cuba. And that is just the kind of thing that we like to do here at the library. We like to be able to um, give people a kind of a window into other worlds and to also showcase the um, kind of work that um, Vermonters do and our um, in our own community, that you know, the artists in our own community. So, and I'm delighted to think that there'll be all these meetings in this room, and people will be able to see it throughout the community. Um, yeah, I'm just delighted to have it here. Hi, I'm Louise Andrews, and I've traveled to Cuba twice, once in 2019 and once in 2020. Uh, both trips were through the Cuban American Friendship Society, and I was an organizer for both of those trips. Uh, memory is a little fuzzy as to which trip these pictures are from. It's either 2019 or 2020. Um, this first photograph is a picture of just a neighborhood cafe. We arrived uh, in Cuba and this little place was just down the street from where we stayed. I thought it was so charming and tiny and I loved all the flags and we had a lovely little, you know, first dinner in Cuba there, so um, I have very warm memories of this particular place. 
the next picture is um, an artist. I was just walking down the street with some other people in our tour group and um, just peeked into these openings that are arch, often arched down uh, all of these little streets um, in these very, very old buildings. And he was just so receptive uh, and friendly, and I loved his studio. I thought it was so fantastic the way the staircase comes up and um, the, the photographs, I mean, the paintings that he's working on um, just spoke to me. I mean, he, he represents the Cuban people in their faces, and so, um, and his face is absolutely wonderful. So that's that one. Finally, um, this uh, other picture was, uh, on the right is uh, the tour guide from uh, both of our trips, and her name is Lorena. And we were at this um, area where they had uh, all kinds of stalls with people's artwork in them. So it was pretty much a, a fabulous, uh, wonderful place to go and look in all these little studios where people had their artwork. And they were standing in front of this mural. And the fellow on the left, <laughs> uh, was dressed to the nines. I loved it. And he was speaking about the, um, the African uh, influence on the art of Cuba. And uh, that's Malcolm X, I think, on his uh, T-shirt there. Um, and it was a very moving uh, and wonderful experience both times. I would go back any time. I wish our country would be a little more open to uh, traveling back and forth from Cuba. I'm David Garten. I'm a photographer. I'd like to thank you for putting me on the spot and making me uncomfortable here because I'm not happy doing public speaking. At the same time, I'm really grateful for this opportunity and uh, it's really a, a tremendous opportunity to display these photos in public and have people have the opportunity to see them and appreciate them and learn from them. Um, so here we go. Uh, to my left, your right, uh, is a sequence of photos of my dear, dear friend Sixta Justina Beranes Reyes, who was born in 1915 and died in, nine, in 2009 at the age of 93. Um, this covers a 10-year span of her life from 1994 to 2004. Um, Sixta was one of the most important people in my life. I met her on, I think it was my third or maybe my second trip to Cuba in 1994. Uh, she was very aggressive in confronting me and saying, Tu tienes que aprender a hablar español porque inglés no es suave which means you have to learn how to speak English because English, you have to learn how to speak Spanish because English is not smooth. And I was totally in agreement with her, but a little taken aback by her severity. Um, however, within a very short period of time, I came to regard her as an incredible resource. And within a short period after that, she was on a glide path to becoming one of the most important people in my life. I, I dearly loved her and I carry her here forever. This was her birthday on March 28, 1999, her 84th birthday, which was the day that the Baltimore Orioles had an exhibition game with the Havana Industriales baseball teams. Uh, and instead of going to the game, I went to seek this house to give her those sunflowers because that was what was important to me. And then this is her 90th, 89th birthday five years later. And for those of you uh, Vermont residents and Vermonters watching this, um, I don't know whether you will recognize former Governor Madeline Cunin who I brought to see Sixta while Madeline was on a tour organized by the Flynn Theater. 
This is Cesar playing percussion at Cajon de Hamel, which is uh, an alley which presents a rumba performance, performance every Sunday at noon. The audience is maybe 65 or 75 percent Cuban and 25 or 35 percent tourists. It's a very authentic um, and energetic performance. Um, I've been attending it for many, many years. On this particular day, December 13th, 2015, it was the first time I had ever seen Cesar play percussion. It's the first time I had ever seen Cesar in my life. And I really loved his approach to percussion. He had tremendous energy, incredible tone, really forward-leaning sense of time and driving musicianship. And I thought he was fantastic. Um, when I downloaded the photos of him later that day, since I didn't know him, I couldn't read whether this was a good photo or not. You often catch musicians making grimaces while they're performing, contorting their faces, and it's just hard to know if you don't know someone whether that's uh, flattering or not. But. Um, a few nights later, I was walking down the street around 1 a.m., and I came across Cesar approaching me from the other direction on the sidewalk with a couple of other Cuban young men. And when we got closer together, I said, oh, you're that guy who was playing in Cajon de Hamel. I love you. I love the way you were playing. And we got into a fantastic conversation, uh, at which point now I got an opportunity to know him a little bit better and realized that, that it is a good photo. Moving right along, this photo is of my dear friend, Andrea. Andrea's about 15 years younger than Sixta would be if she were still alive. And she's uh, certainly not a substitute for Sixta, but she's another dear, dear friend of mine, very special relationship. Andrea came into my life and I came into her life shortly after her son was murdered. And I returned to Cuba and learned that someone who uh, I had photographed was no longer with us. So one of the other young men in the neighborhood asked me if I wanted to bring the photo to his mother. And I said, of course. So I went into the house where I was staying, down a dark hallway where no one was home, to the closet where the photo was stored. And my heart was beating really fast, and I thought, this is not the dream I expected to wake up to. But in this moment, I have an opportunity and a responsibility. So I brought the photo to Andrea's house, and I entered, and she was standing in her living room, rooted to the floor like a boulder in her grief. And I told her that I had known her son, and that I really liked him, and that I was so sorry. And we hugged, and then we went into the next room and sat down. And I held her for about 15 minutes. And people were walking in and out of the room going like, who's that guy? But I could see that they felt, well, I don't know who he is, but he's helping Andrea, so he's cool. And from there forward, we became very close friends with, as you can probably appreciate, a very special relationship. And we love each other. And she is the matriarch of her family, and everyone loves Andrea. On this day, we were hanging out in her living room. I was taking a pause, uh, resting, not preparing to take any photos, when she asked me to take a picture of her with her saints. So if Andrea wanted me to do something, now I was no longer on a pause. We went back into this room, and all I said to her was, stand over there. And she just went into the zone. Um, giving me this incredible gift of an image showing her in her splendor in her environment
And this is a photo of the Capitol building taken from the roof of the Hotel Saratoga, which uh, exploded about two years ago. Uh, so this vantage point currently does not exist, although one can assume that it will be recreated when the hotel is rebuilt. Um, incredible viewpoint. I photographed from there over a number of years. On this particular day, I was photographing in the abandoned ruined theater Campo Amor, which is located one, two blocks behind the Capitol building and behind the National Ballet Theater, where a friend of mine squatted for about 30 years. And I've spent countless hours photographing inside that environment, uh, which is just utterly surrealistic with uh, um, trees growing from the third floor exterior balconies whose two inch in diameter roots have found their way three stories down to the floor of the interior of the theater. So on this day I was working there for uh, an extended period of time and I got dehydrated. And I said to Ray, I gotta go get something to drink. So I walked out the door, one block this way, another block this way, made a right onto this road over here, walked over to the Hotel Saratoga, never once looking up when I got to the roof of the Saratoga and turned to take this photo, which I've taken numerous times previously. It was the first time that I saw the sky and I was just floored. Um, what a crazy opportunity. What a crazy, beautiful, wonderful configuration of clouds. Um, and parenthetically, I was in Cuba two weeks ago and this street was completely deserted. No cars, no pedestrians, a reflection of uh, the post-pandemic, ongoing economic crisis taking place in Cuba as we speak. So that's a short rundown of the photos that I've got in this exhibition here today. Um, thank you for listening. I'm Jordan Douglas, and I had the opportunity to go to Cuba in January of 2015 on a trip with Burlington College. Uh, Peter Curtis was leading that trip uh, with a, a course on street photography and I was able to bring several of my students from St. Michael's College and also from Champlain College. The course which I was assistant teaching was about uh, digital photography for the main, for, for mainly for the students but I brought a whole bunch of black and white film, the thing that I like to do. Um, I'm an analog photographer mainly, and um, so I, whenever I could, kind of made time to wander around and, and find photographs and explore the city and capture what I could. Um, for the most part, what I did was I kind of went away from what I felt was touristy, the obvious things, the attractions, and moved a little more toward the inner city and the, the, the parts of Cuba that seemed really expressively in flux. Um, the old history, the, you know, deteriorating, and was really interested in how the people were kind of fitting into that, their, their family lives and the way the city um, continued to function. Um, despite um, all the, the, the erosion and deterioration of the infrastructure. Um, so as I slowly kind of moved through the city um, in the heat of the tropical sun, um, I really tried to investigate um, what made Cuba, what made Havana um, distinct. Um, as, I, as I meandered, I, I learned uh, to move more slowly and that attracted less attention. You just kind of saunter and sit still for a while. Uh, I was able to observe a little more uh, peacefully without people um, approaching me and asking questions. Um, this church, which is um, the Iglesia del, Carme del Carmen, um, is a, is a, has a very um, tall statue, which you can see from um, well, most parts of the city. It's always kind of looming somewhere in the distance. Um, and uh, quite a beautiful little monument to some of the history there. Um, and you can see the clouds. I was shooting on black and white film, 
Um, and this process of printing, which uh, affects the color, is called lith printing, L-I-T-H. It's an alternative darkroom technique that um, moves the black and white toward a warmer tone. So these aren't sepia toned. That effect happens in the printing. It also explodes the grain a little bit, so the, so the images can get really grainy. And I think that effect works really nicely for this kind of urban and antiquated uh, imagery. This is an example of a little courtyard inside of a apartment complex. Uh, most of the apartment buildings have these little inner sanctums where um, you can do your washing and hang laundry um, and probably hang out, have a cigarette or whatever. Um, just a peaceful little moment. Um, one of the things I'm always interested in photography is how you can see the signs of evolution and change. Um, the, like I said earlier, what remains of the past and how that is affecting the present. Um, the last picture over here um, was one where I, f I finally got a little more creative. As I was walking through the city and photographing over two weeks, um, I kept asking myself, what, what am I actually doing here? Sure, there's these beautiful moments all around me, interesting things to photograph, but um, what's going to make it special? What about this city? What about this, mo this time um, can I try to capture? And it was, I think, one of the last nights that I was there in the... Uh, Twilight was happening, the light was fading, and I had 3200 speed film, very high speed film. So I loaded my camera with a 3200 speed film, and I got alongside um, this wall which surrounds Havana called the Malecon. Um, and this is the wall that symbolically separates the Cubans from America. 90 miles to the north is, are the Florida Keys. And so this wall not only contains the waves which crash over that retaining wall and splash way into the street but also it contains Cubans they, they're not they can't go to America um, at least at, at that time and hopefully that will change um, and of course all these um, antique cars from the 40s and 50s are, are a big part of the city and so I um, I took a few of these photographs with a slower speed as the light was shifting and I feel like I finally got to something that seemed a little more um, unique and expressive and so that um, that expressed green has to do with the high speed film um, and of course the lights and the old car it starts to feel like it's a little bit out of time what you can't really see here is the height of that wall um, it's actually probably about chest high um, and in the evening um, young Cubanos come and they hang out there. It's like a party scene for a lot of families. They live in close quarters with several generations in a small apartment. And so for young people, um, their opportunity to go out and hang out together and, and dance and, and party a little bit is often here along the Malecon. So um, it's a very um, colorful place. Um, here it seems a little quiet. Um, it was about to rain but um, also, like, again, a very signature part of the city. So I haven't been back since 2015, but um, I was hoping that the changes that Obama had announced would, would take root, but obviously that hasn't happened. Um, Cuba is still very isolated from Americans, and, uh, but I'd like to go back again. Hi there, my name is Jamie Hansen. Uh, I live in Montpelier, Vermont. Um, there's six pieces here that I uh, took in 2019. Um, I did a solo trip there, uh, spent three weeks um, traveling, and uh, mostly spent my time in Havana. So a lot of these photographs here, I believe, are in Havana. Um, I was surprised um, that I was going to be um, so taken by the beauty. Um, I wasn't planning on doing much photography on this trip, but um, I was just blown away and couldn't resist and uh, um, 
just feel so grateful to have um, witnessed all that I witnessed and I wanted to bring back um, small uh, snippets of of this of the magic that I got to experience there um, most all of the photographs um, actually all the photographs were taken with my phone um, and this was nice because I could um, I could I could take the photos um, without anyone really noticing um, so I was able to um, uh, quietly uh, um, capture um, what I um, yeah what was just happening in front of me um, so it was mostly just catching like the essence the light um, the movement the energy of um, of what was happening around me and um, I I was definitely drawn to the people um, I I pretty much always had um, uh, people in the photographs um, and there's one photograph here that this young couple they sold flowers and um, there was something about them that uh, I just felt drawn to asking if I could take their photo and they hopped up on this ledge and and like the whole thing took about 10 seconds and um, this is actually the only photograph that I asked someone um, to pose um, you'll notice that all the other photographs are um, just um, just me catching people doing their uh, daily routine. My name is Barbara Young. I have traveled in many, many places around the world photographing, and one of the most interesting places I think that I've ever had a chance to visit has been Cuba. And the images that I have here on display tonight reflect part of my vision of what I saw when I was lucky enough to spend a few weeks there. Um, this image that's closest to me right now is in the Teatro Nacional and it is a, a supremely gorgeous building which just is to me so elegant in terms of bringing forth the contrast that exist in Havana today between the very, very beautiful and the very, very ancient and dilapidated. And um, these two people were sitting admiring the, the view. There was no show on at the time. There was not a ballet or a, or a concert, but I just sort of saw them looking up and tried to capture their awe of the beauty that was around them. And, of course, when you travel outside of Havana into the tobacco region, you see a completely different view of the world. And this is a little, small, humble cottage of a tobacco farmer. And what I liked about this image was the, was the, clo the clothes on the line and the hat on the chair and the hut in the back where the tobacco was dried. It just kind of represented the old days in Cuba. And the last image that I have is of Fidel in an old abandoned building which contains a beautiful rooftop restaurant. It's a little south of the Centro area in Havana and it just 
again, it, it, it's the contrast between the elegance and the, the decay. And it, you see it over and over again. And to me, it was fascinating to see how warm and loving the Cubans were. And to photograph there was just a, an awesome privilege. So I wanted to remind everyone um, that these two shows, the one at the Darkroom Gallery in Essex is open for the rest of the month on Fridays and Saturdays. And the one at the Pickering Room in the Fletcher Free Library in Burlington is open the hours of the library during the week and also till the end of the month, till the beginning of July. So July 1 in one case and July 6 in the other case. So please visit the shows on your own. And if you're interested in one of the catalogs, um, you can still order one by contacting me. And they're $20. And it's a collection of the photographs from the Cuban photographers. And it's absolutely spectacular. Thank you all for your interest in Cuba. And we hope to continue our friendship exchange with the people of Cuba. Thank you.